my god! I think I've lost Brian, I couldn't help myself, I had to go faster! How awesome is that? <laughs> oh, that's good, man. Ladies and gentlemen, today we have on the channel a man who needs no introduction, BKXC. <laughs> One of the most famous mountain bike YouTubers on the planet. We're gonna do a little interview and see what he has to say. So Brian, how's life? Great, living cool. the dream, as everyone tells me every day. <laughs> as everyone tells you every day? <laughs> yeah. So my question for you is what did you do before you were a mountain bike YouTube star? Yeah, so I worked at potsandpans.com. So I was a cookware manufacturer and basically worked on the website, a lot of e-commerce stuff, loading pots and pans to the website, taking them down. And before that, I worked as a, kind of an online editor at a newspaper. So very tech website development content related stuff. Hmm. Did you cook things with pots and pans? Of course. Keep mixing and kind of stirring this stuff around a little bit. You know you got a good pan when you can kind of just move the eggs around and they don't stick. I got oh, the nice. best Anilon pots and pans. Nice. That's the brand. That's the, that's what you want to go for. The nice, Anilon man. stuff. The yeah. Anilon stuff. <laughs> Very cool. So then when did you decide, I'm over it. I'm over pots and pans. I want to ride mountain bikes. Man, how much YouTube time do channel? we have? Holy crap. <laughs> yeah, so... I, I was kind of always researching online businesses and how do you how could you turn like a little side hustle into something real and I had had this whole channel of uh, smart sprinkler controllers you know that water your lawn there's like oh, yeah, sprinkler yeah. controllers that connect to Wi-Fi I made a bunch of videos about that I reviewed everything in that space and I did affiliate links and I did blog write-ups and I actually made like a couple hundred bucks a month from that little YouTube experiment yeah and then I saw Nate Hills video where he's wearing a gimbal and all of a sudden the sound is clear as day and the, the, the video is amazing and that was the first time I'd ever seen a mountain bike video like that versus all the other crappy shaky yeah. GoPro stuff that you it can't hear you can't see it was terrible I never watched mountain bike videos and then I saw that and I was like huh I wonder if I could actually do YouTube on mountain biking because Nate Hill stuff it's just POV action boom boom versus YouTube at the time, and now two years later, YouTube back then was personality and fun and being a friend. And mm -hmm. that's kind of what I always saw on my channel. I was like, oh wait, I could go take people on a ride and jabber on and like see if they find it interesting. And from like the first couple videos, people found it interesting yeah. and it was off to the races. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah, man. So that was kind of your strategy from day one is to like be a friend, have a personality on there, not just riding footage, but exactly. just like take them along for the ride. Yeah, because there's I'm not a great rider, so I can't benefit, you know, I, I've got no great skill in riding, so I had to turn on the personality and kind of joke around and see if people actually like my jokes or not. You know, it's kind of weird that so many people do like the personality and riding because, you know, at a party or something, it's not like I'm friggin' the life of the party or yeah. anybody's really that interested in me. <laughs> You don't come in cowboy style at every party? <laughs> no, I do not. Cowboy style. Where did, where, speaking of cowboy style, where did cowboy style come in? Is that just a good fun Yeah, I, you that, I don't know. That was like some, uh, I rode with this guy, Adam Colton, who was like a longboarding dude, like in uh, L Las Vegas we rode, and then we did some SoCal stuff, and he kept saying cowboy style, and I said it, and that's like just kind of a stupid thing to say. <laughs> I like it. Definitely cracks me up, man. <laughs> cowboy sure. style. Good stuff. All right, so we have a question from Turtlehead. Yeah. Uh, favorite non-mountain bike YouTube channel? It's uh, so the the channel is called First We Feast, but the show on that is called Hot Ones, and it's where they get celebrities like do an interview like this, but they're eating progressively hotter chicken wings, and it is absolutely Ooh, great. So they've had good. a lot of like really cool celebrities on there. Sean Evans is the host, and he is like a smooth dude, like really fun, just great stuff. Johnny Knoxville was on it recently. Natalie Portman video just came out. I haven't watched it yet. I look forward to every episode of that. Nice, that's cool. Next question from 1H, 1O, 1O, 1P, 1E, 1R, underscore, when you move into SoCal. Man, SoCal is nice. It's especially hanging out with you guys and like feeling like part of feeling like part of the family here like is very very cool like i come out and i hang out i ride with all these guys they're very welcoming and there's so many great trails there's a scene yeah, there here is. it's awesome but uh 
I get a variation of this question asked like all the time. Like, if you ever would move to anywhere, where would it be? And I just love where I live because it's yeah. family. I'm close to family and the trails are great all around where I live. And now I feel like it's kind of my duty to like start a scene there and like to get something going and make something happen and build a real community offline. Phones away, yeah. videos away, and just kind of hanging out with folks. That's cool. Well, so then the question for 1H10101P1E1R underscore is, when are you moving to wherever the heck you live in NorCal? Yeah, exactly. Um, Come on down to Vallejo. Slow Cal. Vallejo. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> uh, next one we got here. Underscore, 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 V dot R underscore, underscore, underscore. What led you to take up mountain biking? Was it a gradual transition or did you jump in head first? So my uncle was a mountain biker, and I've never asked him the story, like, how did you get into mountain biking? But he was a mountain biker, and after college, I moved back to the town that he lives in, Crockett, and we used to get up super early in the morning and go ride. I think I had a hardtail at the time. We'd kind of ride road and fire road stuff, and he, he was a monster cardio guy and just, like, would burn me, and we'd do all these super tough climbs, and it was always fun. It was just tons of fun hanging out with my uncle. So I had a bike kind of sort of then, and then a couple years later, fell off of it, and my brother was, like, looking online, like, man, we should get in shape. And we were always kind of skinny, but we were never in shape. Like, you know, running up a hill in a good, decent clip is being yeah. in shape. And so he, like, found on some forum, like, oh, mountain biking. Oh, let's look at mountain biking. And then all of a sudden, we realized we live in this awesome area in NorCal with tons of trails and tons of opportunities. He got a bike. I got a bike. We started riding every single weekend pretty much for five years. And then he got married, and I started the channel, and we've kind of drifted apart, and now we're kind of back. Like, he's been back. I've ridden with him a bunch of times now. So nice. it's, it's been great. Yeah, the love. That's cool. Good stuff, man. Well, woods and stuff. I know that guy. I rode with him today. You know that guy. Coke or Pepsi? Coke. Pepsi's just weird. I just like a, a solid Coke. Do you like the just the regular Coca-Colas or like those Mexican ones with a glass bottle and the cane sugar? You know, this is probably sacrilege, but I can't really tell the difference between oh the, the, the Mexican Coke. See, absurd. see, this is like <laughs> my, my constant thing of like, I, I can't really tell the difference between a 29er and 27.5. You know, I'm just, I'm not the guy to ask for a... Uh, that kind of advice. You're not like a detailed guy. No, I just extent. it just feels good. Just get out there, experience yeah. it. Like people get so hung up on all this stuff. I think it's, it's, true, it's mental masturbation. It stops them from like enjoying their lives. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I completely agree. One of the things I always tell people, you know, in our industry that they get caught up on like what bike to ride or what size or what brand or like this drivetrain, that drivetrain. It's like just like calm down. <laughs> There's a lot of great parts right now, a lot of great bikes. Just, like, get out there, get an awesome bike, ride it, and have fun. Like, don't worry about it. Like, you're not going to go out there and be like, oh, my God, if I was on this brand yes. that has better suspension, I'd be happier. Like, exactly. It doesn't work like that. You're gonna yeah. Have and I'm just as guilty time. as anyone else is obsessing about anything. And I, I, But I try to distance myself from that with the channel. Yeah. Cool. Go harder. Oh, my God. Gas. Here's something not many people see. BKXC taking a leak in the bushes. Big time. How's it look, Zach? Looks great. Yeah, if you could have those TPS reports in by Saturday. Top of the climb, BKXC, Zach, how is it? We're not at the top. Quit lying. Okay, we're close to the top. I, <laughs> I did lie. I for sure lied. You ready? Yeah. Yeehaw. Cowboy style, Brian. <laughs> Turbo Wolf underscore. Hey Brian, how many Cokes do you drink a day? At least seven. Jeez.
No, I don't. That, that, <laughs> it gives the impression that I'm like always drinking Cokes. They're always eating McNuggets. Like a Coke is a special thing to have after mm. a ride. I really, I, if anyone wants my unsolicited weight loss advice, stop fucking drinking Coke. Stop drinking anything. Just drink water, please. You'll freaking start losing weight immediately. Cool. Yeah. Good advice. I get fired up about it. <laughs> so Cokes for you are like chocolate chip cookies for me. It's like heroin for me. Yeah. Oh, well, that's a serious addiction. Next one up. Western perspective. What scares you the most about being a public personality? There's two ways this kind of question triggered in my mind when I, I heard that. It's, uh, I, I'm afraid of letting people down because this whole thing is built on people liking me, which is yeah. about the weirdest thing you could imagine. That it's like all like, hey, if people like me, then it's good. And it's like, that's a weird thing. Like that can blow away in the wind very quickly. And the other thing that scares me is like some fucking weirdo showing up to my house and having to beat the shit out of him or something. <laughs> and that will happen if you show up to my house. Break the wrist, walk away. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> or you'll turn the sprinklers on him. Yeah, there you, you go. Just be like, from from yeah. my app. You'll just be like, Alexa, got him. Sprinklers on this guy. Got him. This demented yeah. weirdo that was resourceful <laughs> enough to find my address. The sprinklers will definitely deter him. Mm. Or her. I mean, you might not want to deter her, though. <laughs> Never know. Side note there. Brody underscore MTB. I know you, BKXC. But you don't always ride XC, so if you could ride only Enduro or XC, what would it be? Enduro, 100%. It's, it's great. Oh, it's man. the best. You should change it to BKEN. Now, many people have suggested that. Really? And, uh, so I've said this like a thousand times now, but when I started my channel, XC to me and my brother and like the races that went on in NorCal yeah. were like big ass crazy climbs and then awesome descents. I did not know that it was shaved legs and spandex. I did not really, not really think. I had no idea that that's what cross country was. So yeah. now I say like BK across the countries. <laughs> Perfect. BK cross country. Across, across the, the countries. countries. Perfect. Trail features, mayo or miracle whip? Oh, miracle whip? Blah, blah, blah. Mayo. Real mayo, mayo with eggs. Do you use mayo on anything? Everything. Oh, wow. Okay. I love it. Cool. Yeah. American guy. I was just in Croatia, and they put mayo on everything just because oh. they're like, oh, you're American. Let me put mayo on it. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Weird stuff. Ty.brenninger, what are your strengths and weaknesses as a rider? I think we all know that. I love rock gardens. I love crazy technical stuff, and I hate jumps. I'm just not good at the jumps yet. Someday I will spend a couple days and have somebody like you Teach me how to jump. One day, man. Take it. Your busy, busy schedule. <laughs> running the world here. I invited you to our last Whistler trip. Yes, you did. I you did. did. I, I was in the UK. Yeah, fair enough. But I do it's hard lining up our schedules. I appreciate the invite, though. We'll go there one day. I'm going to ride some to. jumps. But you have been since the last time I rode with you. You're like considerably faster. Thank you. You know, so awesome. Be proud of yourself. It's, yeah, I hope so. You're making progress. At this point, <laughs> You're making progress. Question from Logan Mullally: How many different glasses have you used, and which are best? This is a solid question. So, I, if I, if my mind serves me right, I think I've had four different glasses over the years. Which is funny because for five years, I pretty much had the same glasses: the Surface, like S E R F A S. Like, yeah. They're kind of cheapo, like the lenses were so scratched up, like the switchable lens, but like they were fine for years and years. I don't know how many buckets of sweat I've gone through on those. But then it's like, ooh, those 100% glasses look cool. And then they slid down my nose constantly. Now they're like my driving glasses. Then I got uh, the Smith Forefront and I freaking love those things. They're so awesome. I've also used the Oakley Prism flak jacket and they're okay. They're just not as, I just really like the Smith uh, Forefront. Yeah. They do look good, too. Yeah. I, mean, I think all those glasses you mentioned look pretty good. Dustagram 8, what's the best bike you've ever ridden? Right now, it's the Orbea Ram. I really yeah. do feel like it's the best, and it, it, it has like triggered that thing in me to like get better. But cool. before that, the answer was the Yeti SB6 when I rode with Liam on the Grudge. Yeah. Like that just felt, that was just like, wow, and just waiting for anything to kind of get that good. And now I feel like my bike has. My question, though, is a lot of people have been hopping on these long travel, like five and a half, six inch travel 29ers and falling in love. Yeah. Have you ridden many other long travel 29ers? I, uh, have I? 
That's a good question. I rode the SB55, but I cool. don't even remember because I think we did Space Mountain or something on yeah, it. it was, you know, it wasn't it was the a, it was a basic ride. Yeah. It wasn't the soup. Suicide trail, but mm -hmm. uh, I think the trail makes the bike almost every time. Like yeah. I'm totally guilty of that. So, yeah, I haven't ridden any others. I know the Ritmos flying off the shelves, and yeah, the long travel 29 is the thing. It is a thing right now. It's sold cool out see. everywhere. <laughs> yeah, man, they really are. It's cool to see. That's like a, just a good that type of bike is yeah. really resonating with people, and they're enjoying it. So, it's obviously working with you as well. It's great. Yeah. Uh, MTB and beyond, what were your main reasons for going with the Orbea Rallon? Uh, like supporting more unknown brands, the spec, or maybe the colors? So Orbea had, just like you guys, Orbea had actually been in contact with me very early on in the channel. Landon was the guy that was working there, a marketing guy, and we had gone back and forth and back and forth about a lot of different stuff. And then like when this new Rayon came out, we kind of got they were like, hey, we're kind of serious about like sponsoring you. And I'm like, hey, I don't like sponsorships. Yeah. <laughs> and so yeah, we yeah. kind of went back and forth about that. And we decided on, hey, we'll give you a bike for free, no strings attached. And I was like, that sounds like a great bike to ride. <laughs> and I had ridden it in Spain. And I have this connection with Spain of like going there. I've gone there every year since I started my channel. And like they had the new Rayon. And it's like a Spanish company. And it's made in Spain. It's all this, this Spain stuff. And you know, there's no other bike company that actually has ever reached out to me and got a conversation going. Maybe here and there, kind of wispy things, but like Orbea actually spent the time yeah, and talked to me it, and like, yeah. hey, and now I'm thinking things would probably start changing with that, but hey, maybe not. And uh, I just love the bike. It's great. A little custom thing. It looks and, cool. Uh, it takes forever to get when you order one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, speaking of bikes, we're going to cut to a couple clips of this guy riding the Orbea behind me on Suicide Trail yesterday. Jesus! <laughs> A little drop. Woo! Hell yeah. <laughs> Whoa! Oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> There's the big one. Ah! Go, go. <laughs> Shouldn't have stopped. Okay. All that time I felt like I had uh, my multi tool pocket was open, so like, distracted. <laughs> Alexander underscore underscore La Lande, how do you pick the trails you ride? It's easy. So many people in the comments pick the trails that I ride. When I hear a place over and over and over again, I know I have to go there. And the biggest example for me is like Blue Derby, Blue Derby in Tasmania. Like yeah. I heard people talk about it forever. Oh, yeah. And then I went there and it was awesome. And so that's basically how I pick the trails. And also sometimes people get in contact with me, like this kid Adam from Kenya got in contact with me and kind of sold me on going. And like, it's a tough sell when it's like, if there's no like mountain bike yeah, Kenya, tourism right? product, it's like that. What does that mean? Like tons of people want me to go to Mexico, and I'm like, ah, I, I haven't found any like a product. Like there's a there isn't anybody. Well, there might be one guy that's actually doing like shuttles and yeah, tourism yeah. stuff, but like when there's actually some infrastructure in, in place, it means it's probably yeah. a pretty damn good place good to ride. Good riding, yeah. But yeah, my my buddy Ket. But yeah, my buddy Adam in Kenya like convinced me to come, and I saw his Instagram. He's like popping manuals and wheelies and stuff. So I'm like, okay, there's probably good riding out there, and it was. It was like this awesome leap of faith yeah. that turned into some of the best videos. Nice, that's cool. That's an interesting way to like find what trails are cool. Just kind of like crowdsource it yeah. almost. Just listen to what people exactly. are saying. Yeah. All right, Stephen Hand TKE. Steven Hanticky. Hunkety. Hunkety. Uh, what are the hardest parts of getting started with the channel, and what was an indication of it starting to be successful? That's a good question. I have a whole video about this, kind of like how I started my YouTube channel, because I get this question a lot. The hardest thing is like just rising above the noise. And yeah. two years ago, there wasn't that much noise. So now there's a lot of noise. So to rise above the noise is going to be tough. But I think a good personality is 90% of a YouTube channel. So if you don't have personality, if you can't enunciate or like do behind the scenes stuff, do something else. You can yeah, yeah, still, yeah. there's still friggin' ways to make Camera videos. Camera presence, right? There's, but like if you want to be this one size fits all YouTube personality, that's what YouTube is. It's personality and yeah. then everything else kind of 
falls in line, I think. Yeah. What was the second half? Well, what's uh, an oh. early indication of it starting to be successful? Yeah, the early indication of it being successful is people finding it almost immediately, positive comments almost yeah. immediately, and being like, okay, here we go, let's put more effort in this, and the more I put in, the more I got out, and even to this day, the more I put in, the more I get out. Yeah, that's cool. That's got to be gratifying oh, too, it's right? it's insane. It's pretty yeah. much the craziest thing in the world to think that I can live my life like this, and it's one in a million, one in a billion, one in ten million, who knows what it is, but it's insane. Yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, it's it's cool. Like, even when I first watched your channel, I was like, this is fun, you know? Like, you definitely, like, do a good job of, like, exemplifying your fun through the camera. So, that to me, like, when I watched it, I was like, that's a cool channel. So, nice. Next one up here, Turd Ferguson, 69420. He would like to know, if you weren't riding bikes, what would you be doing? Man, that is an interesting question. I wonder if I would have still pursued some kind of YouTube or internet marketing kind of thing and somehow found an audience doing something else because that's kind of where I was going with my research and kind of like this idea that working for the man, you're never going to yeah. really, you're, there'll always be a ceiling. But the ceiling and safeness of that is very cool for most people. And you know, people always ask me, like, what do you do for health insurance? It's <laughs> like, hey, 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 don't worry about it. <laughs> no, I, I do have health insurance. But, like, that, so. it's, you know, what would I be doing? Who friggin' knows? I don't know. Working at some place like everybody else? Yeah. Yeah. What kind of place? Not pots, pots and pans. pans. <laughs> pots and pans. <laughs> That's the place. I'd be running the joint. Yeah, man. You'd be clanking pots and pans. Yeah. Mr. Tonka.mtb. Um,. He would like to ask about the DVO fork. What happened to the DVO suspension? That's like uh, this. It's a running joke slash meme on my uh, channel. Basically, I'm not because, cute into this. Sorry. <laughs> no, it's no. It's, it, I I wanted it in there for sure because it's like I test so many different things. People are always like, huh, "Why'd you switch?" Yeah. So like the DVO thing was like a huge like, huh, "What? Why'd you switch?" And it's like, yeah, I just want to test different stuff. How can I ever? Be knowledgeable and I still haven't got to the point to be knowledgeable at all about suspension and forks yeah. and like what does this feel like and how does the coil feel I'm still freaking clueless so don't worry about it <laughs> I don't know I switch <laughs> I switch shit all the time it's, it is what it is there's That's not part of the fun of mountain bikes exactly though. always new stuff to try yeah and if something catastrophically went wrong you guys would hear about it it would be in the video yeah so did you love it the I don't, fork? I, it was, was it better than the fox you're riding now no I don't know I don't <laughs> Now it's like been so long. I don't. If it was, yeah. I would put that thing back on. I, I'm clueless, man. Yeah. I just ride. <laughs> you just ride and smile. Mm-hmm. Uh, we kind of chatted on this one earlier. Steven dot L dot Daniels. Why don't you do jumps? Why not learn to? Question mark. Yeah, I'll learn. I'll learn something. Yeah. Someday. You'll get there. I liked your I need professional help video. Yeah. There wasn't much would... jump stuff in there. No, it was more like kind of the theory of yeah. manuals are kind of. I thought it was friendly. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's good stuff in there. <laughs> it was good. Pit next to lap. Why do you swear so fucking much? <laughs> that's just who I am, man. <laughs> it's who I am. If you the there that's always a, a bone of contention with people and I get it if you get surprised like watching with your kids, you're like, ah crap, but like if you come on a ride, that's what my videos are. You're coming yeah. on a ride with me. The good and the bad and the ugly, and that's who I am. The authenticity, man. That's what I try to strive for, and uh, I think that's 99.9% .9 of my success is authenticity. Yeah. yeah, that's true. I mean, I can say, like, as long as I've known you and everything we've ever done, whether, like, personal friendship or business dealings, sponsorship, like, ideas I've tossed towards you, like, you're an authentic dude. Like, you don't budge. You're just like, <laughs> this is how it is. This is why. I don't know. About, like, I like that, though. Like, you'll just shut down ideas if it doesn't resonate with yeah. you. Yeah. That's cool. Like, I respect that. I yeah. think that's awesome you do that. It's just staying true is very important. Yeah. Absolutely. Stingray 454. Brian, how many miles do you usually ride a day and how many times a week? That's a really interesting question because basically my Strava has all my rides. There are a couple rides that I leave private on Strava if I'm doing, like, bootleg trail kind of stuff. But... It, most people, I think, that watch my channel might even ride more than me. <laughs> like, I might ride three days a week, but usually it's like I go on these big trips, I'll ride for 10 days straight, yeah. and then come back and edit the video. That gives me, like, a couple months' worth of content, and then I'm kind of trying to ride here and there. But if you had to average it, like, if I went three days a week, eh, let's say 12 miles a ride, maybe 36 miles a week. Maybe. And more and less sometimes. Yeah. Nice. Speaking of that, we're going to cut to some more clips of us riding.
I got no traction. <laughs> And we're back with more questions for oh. BKXC. Ooh, baby. Do you think people don't actually know your real name? No, actually, I, I do think they know my name, which yeah. is even weirder because I'll say it here and there. It, like, it doesn't come up in my videos as much. But when I see people on the trail, they're like, hey, Brian. Like, very rarely yeah. does someone say, like, oh, BK or, like, BKX. Like, they don't even know my name. It's very interesting because Seth and Alex, my buddies, so Seth's bike hack, single track sampler, yep. like, they say my name in the videos and I'm in their videos. So I think it's this kind of community thing that if people are a fan of the channel, and it's on my about page, but nobody goes to my about page kind of thing. But it's very interesting that I'm way surprised that people know what my name is. Yeah. Yeah. I usually just call you BKXC because it's like in my brain, I introduce you as that sometimes yeah. and like, does that bother you? No, no, not at all. Cool. Like BK is cool, but yeah, BK <laughs> that's fine. Yeah, so you're just BKXC, man. Yeah. So Tyler Stents, when are you getting a van? Oh man, I get this question all the time now because the van, like the van, van life fervor, is trendy. It's like just it's at a full on froth, and uh, I've been looking at stuff, and I'm semi interested, but it has to be pretty small. It has to fit in my garage, and that's kind of that's tough. So like a Dodge Caravan, maybe? So like a Nissan MV200 <laughs> Recon, whatever, package or whatever. I kind of look. I got to reach out to those guys and see, yeah. see, see, see what kind of deal they could get me. Nice. G Architect, what are your spring rate, damper settings, and preferred low-speed compression settings? Right in the middle. <laughs> Default. <laughs> Default. Whatever Fox says. Cool. Do you look at their recommended settings and run yeah, that? Yeah. You do? Yeah. Cool. Nice. Have you ever like ridden with guys from Fox and asked them to like help you tune your suspension? No, no. You should do that. They're not far from you either. They don't want to ride with me. Oh, Who are you totally talking do, to, right? Now. Totally do. <laughs> Those guys would love to. They're cool guys. If one of them knows who I am and watching this video, I'll eat my shoe. <laughs> <laughs> That's good because I know who they are. I'm gonna ask them to watch your videos so no, they eat the shoe. No. <laughs> um, a. MacArthur97, who's the faster rider, you, Alex, or Seth? So on the climbs, I'm the fastest. Oh, yeah? Uh, Seth is a maniac. He's the fastest on like a, yeah, he's the fastest maniac. Alex is very, very fast on a downhill. So I could, I could beat him on the climbs. That's about it. But they still got you on the downs. Big time, big time. All right. Yeah. Cool. One question you said a lot of people are curious about is how tall are you and what size bike do you ride? That seems to have come up all of a sudden. I feel like people are in like new buying, new bike buying frenzy mode right now. Like I've got like at least four or five emails over the past week of like, hey, what size rayon do you wear? What size rayon do you ride and how tall are you? So I'm five foot ten inches tall and I ride a large rayon. And then my Santa Cruz Bronson also is a large. Did you ever ride a medium? I've ridden a medium here and there and it always felt good. But even now, my knees come pretty close to the top tube and stuff. It's very odd. You just got to get on a bike. Like, you really do just have to get on demo bike. And, and Worldwide Cycle Read demos all kinds of great <laughs> bikes. And honestly, they really do. So it's like the one chance you're going to get to go ride some really gnarly trails and on a really, really good bike, it is here. Yeah, the first time you came here, you were pumped on that. You rode, like, four different bikes. Yeah, it's like awesome. Because you can just come here and ride them. Yeah, bike sizing is tough. I always tell people like same thing: demo bikes, try it yourself, see what you feel comfortable with. Um, I've become a bike sizing nerd. 
one of our best YouTube videos is me talking about bike sizing. Um, and cutting down. And I, and I cut a seat tube on a Yeti frame, and a, yeah, a carbon frame. Uh, a little controversial on that one, but yeah, man, bike, bike sizing is tough, but that's pretty fun. So, Well, I think that wraps it up, unless you had any other comments or concerns. That was fantastic. Cool, man. Hey, well, thank you guys for tuning in, and uh, hit subscribe, and we'll see you guys in the next one. I'll see you on the trail.